Alrighty, in just one second, we're going to get into everything you need to know about Zack Snyder's Justice League and whether it is any good. This video is sponsored by our friends over at Helix Sleep. First things first. Yeah, it's actually really good. Zack Snyder's Justice League is actually really good. Now, it is four hours long. Okay, it's really long. And the best way to view it is sort of as a mini-series because it's actually separated into a series of parts. It's like six parts, I think. And each part is about 45 minutes long. And you can kind of watch it like that and be just fine. If you view it like that, then it is not just good, it's kind of awesome. So to understand, number one, why this thing was even made in the first place, you have to go back to 2017 when the original Justice League was released. Now, Justice League was released on the heels of basically a bunch of not fantastically received DC movies. There was Man of Steel, which was pretty well received, and then there was Batman vs. Superman, which was Zack Snyder's next movie, and that one was not particularly well received. I am one of the only defenders of Batman vs. Superman. I actually really like Batman vs. Superman. I like the version of Batman in Batman vs. Superman, who kind of enjoys his job as a, a bit of a sadist, sort of reminiscent of Frank Miller's Batman. And Ben Affleck as Batman is actually, in this trilogy, pretty good. But on the heels of that, there was a lot of talk about whether Justice League was going to be any good. Justice League also did the weird thing in 2017 of not having it introduced half of the characters. So unlike the Marvel movies, several of the characters had not been introduced. We knew Batman, we knew Superman, and we knew Wonder Woman. But we had not yet met Aquaman. He hadn't had his full-length feature film yet, which is sort of weird to have the introductory Aquaman appearance be in Justice League as opposed to in his own feature. Same thing for Cyborg, same thing for The Flash. Now, the big problem in 2017 is that Zack Snyder was well into the process of actually making Justice League, and he stepped away from the movie, and they handed the movie over to Joss Whedon. I despise Joss Whedon. I don't think he's a good person. I don't think he's a good director. I think Joss Whedon is basically, I, like, I don't like any of his movies. The Avengers is not my cup of tea. I think everything that he does is cotton candy. And not only is it cotton candy, it plays the, the really easy game of winking at the audience. The big difference between the DC Universe and in the Marvel Universe is that in the Marvel Universe, there's this kind of quasi-breaking of the fourth wall. There's this assumption that everybody who's watching the movie knows this isn't real, and it's a superhero movie so they can make self-referential jokes that you would never get in real life under any circumstances. The DC movies assume that they are, in fact, their own universe, and that you have to occupy that universe, sort of like Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings. And so once you're in the universe, nobody treats anything in the movies like it's a joke in the way that they would in a Marvel movie where they're treating everything that's happening as though it's a joke, right? Existential threats to humanity in the Marvel movies are treated as like, well, haha, isn't this funny? The city is flying. We're fighting an army of robots. And I have a bow and arrow. None of this makes sense. Whereas in the DC universe, they're treated as existential threats to humanity. It makes them a lot darker, makes them a lot more serious. And this is why I've been a big DC fan for a very long time, because frankly, self-referential, ironic humor is not generally my cup of tea. Okay, so. They make Justice League with Joss Whedon, and he proceeds to absolutely gut the script. He proceeds to cut like two hours from the movie and redo a bunch of it, reshoot a bunch of it. And when the movie comes out, nobody's happy with it. Ben Affleck is really unhappy with it. Henry Cavill is deeply unhappy with it. Like nobody wants to be associated with the film. In fact, there's an anecdote that came out where Christopher Nolan and Zack Snyder's wife actually saw Justice League, and they said to Zack Snyder, it is our mission in life that you never have to subject yourself to this film because the film had been so mutilated. When it came out, I panned it. I'm not so much of a DC homer that I can't acknowledge a piece of dog crap when I see it. The original Justice League is truly an awful movie, surpassing its awfulness only by the first Suicide Squad, which is really, really bad as well. What, we some kind of Suicide Squad? After the original Justice League comes out in 2017, there are these rumblings that Zack Snyder actually had put together a lot more film and that there's a bunch of films sort of on the cutting room floor that there was this script, and Zack Snyder begins putting out these little snippets of what Justice League was supposed to look like, and people get really into this. And so online, there's this whole move to release the Snyder Cut. I will admit that I'm one of the people who is tweeting out hashtag release the Snyder Cut because I kind of like Zack Snyder's work. One of the things about Zack Snyder that you really see in this movie and in all of his other movies that have to do with comic books is his movies actually look like graphic novels, which is super cool. And if you freeze frame anything from a Marvel movie, it's not radically different from what you would see on Buffy the Vampire Slayer because everything kind of looks like Joss Whedon. It almost looks like a TV movie in certain ways. But everything in a Zack Snyder movie, if you just freeze frame it, if you just pause it, 
it looks like it's a panel from a graphic novel in the same way that 300 looks like a panel from a graphic novel or Watchmen looks like a panel from a graphic novel, which is really kind of cool as a fan of the graphic novels. This starts to trend, it becomes a thing. And then a couple of years ago, HBO Max and Warner Brothers decided that they were gonna give Zack Snyder some $70 million to basically go remake the movie. And he goes and he remakes the movie, HBO Max launches it over the course of the last week. And let me just say, the movie's really good. It's really good. So it does all the things that the original Justice League does not. First of all, it actually introduces Cyborg. There are accusations when Cyborg's character became basically an afterthought who said booyah in the original Justice League. Booyah. That that had been done because of race. And maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong. I will tell you that Cyborg actually has an entire storyline that is rather critical to the Justice League frame here. The Flash is in it for like five seconds in the original Justice League. And his main job is to, for some reason, move civilians out of the way at the, in this sort of nuclear radiation infused area of Russia, which is a super Joss Whedon thing, right? Joss Whedon, the thing about the Marvel Universe is it never comes to grips with the fact that actual people get damaged. So the DC Universe, and particularly this trilogy, is actually all about the externalities that happen when gods come to Earth. Right? If you watch Man of Steel, at the very end of Man of Steel, when Superman is fighting Zod, they're throwing each other through buildings. Thousands of people are dying. And in fact, that is the premise for Batman versus Superman, is that Batman sees that these buildings are collapsing. He has friends who have died in those buildings. And so he's pissed off at Superman. He's saying, why have you been given these godlike powers? Why are we trusting you to do the right thing when you had this fight with this guy in the city and killed thousands of people? So the costs to humanity at large are actually being taken into account in the DC Universe, whereas in the Marvel Universe, everything is just sort of elided. When these people are bashing the crap out of each other in the middle of a major city, everybody is somehow okay. Okay, so Joss Whedon kind of lightens it up. He does this jokey, hokey kind of thing with the original Justice League. Do you bleed? Oh, something is definitely bleeding. None of that in the new Zack Snyder film. We'll get to more of this in just one second, but you all know my sleep quality is excellent. The only problem is my kids wake me up too early, which is why I need a great mattress, because when I am asleep, it better be excellent sleep, and that means I need a mattress made just for me, and that's where Helix Sleep comes in. Helix Sleep has a quiz. It takes just two minutes to complete, matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for somebody else? With Helix, you're getting a mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique. Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress models to choose from. They've got soft, medium, firm mattresses. Mattresses great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. Even a Helix Plus mattress for plus size folks. It's been awesome getting unboxing videos from so many of you who found the Helix mattress of your dreams. So, if you are looking for a mattress, you take the quiz, order the mattress that you're matched to, the mattress comes right to your door shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. Helix is awesome, but you don't need to take my word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. So, just go to helixsleep.com slash Ben, take that two minute sleep quiz, they will match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Helix Sleep has a 10 year warranty. That is a long warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk free, so you really have nothing to lose. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you absolutely will. I know because my wife and I sleep on a Helix Sleep mattress. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders. That's a fantastic deal. Plus, you get two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Ben. That's helixsleep.com slash Ben. So, you get the flash actually doing things that are meaningful. In fact, Maybe the most important thing that happens in this movie uh, is a moment when the Flash actually has to reverse time, right? As opposed to he's literally just running around pushing people out of the way. That is not what the Flash does, right? He has to access the speed force and he has to channel his energy in, in a couple of different ways. Okay, so that's really cool. Batman and Wonder Woman's relationship, which is always kind of interesting, is, is good in this. There's a real resonance when Superman comes back. So you'll remember that Superman dies at the end of Batman versus Superman. And there's sort of this implication like he might be alive at the end of Batman versus Superman. Well, in Justice League, they bring him back to life about an hour and 15 through the film. So he's dead and then he's alive. And that all happens within about an hour and 15. Here, because the film is so long, Superman only really makes his reappearance about two thirds of the way through the film. So you have this entire first part of the film where the Justice League gets together and they clearly can't handle the villain Steppenwolf. So this is the other part that actually matters. So Steppenwolf in the last film is just stock movie character. Like he's just, he's stock movie villain. He's the same as every other movie villain here. You actually understand his role in the DC cinematic universe, right? You actually understand that he is supposed to be sort of the bad right-hand man for Darkseid. All you get in the original Justice League, by the way, is a couple of weird throwaway references to Darkseid, including a, a vision from Batman that clearly comes from Snyder's universe. Darkseid is the bad guy lurking in the wings here, and the whole battle of Justice League is fighting to stop Steppenwolf so that he can't unite these mother boxes and bring Darkseid to Earth. So the whole thing is to stave off the arrival 
of Darkseid. Also, Steppenwolf throughout the movies is not like unbelievably powerful and kind of looks bad in the original Justice League. The remake of Justice League, he actually looks pretty cool. Steppenwolf is a cool looking creature. He's a cool looking character. And again, he has this sort of weird Darth Vader to the Emperor relationship that he has with Darkseid that is constantly a touchstone of the film. So you know what Steppenwolf is doing, why he's doing it. You know why people are doing what they're doing. Justice League made no sense because none of the backstories for any of the characters were told. So you get Barry's backstory in this, The Flash. You get Cyborg's backstory in this, Victor. You get Steppenwolf's backstory in this. Originally, in the Joss Whedon version, the crappy version, this was made for widescreen. This one is made in 4.3 because it was made for IMAX. There's a conversation that happens between Lois Lane and between Martha Kent, right, Clark's adoptive mother. And in the Joss Whedon version, it looks like they filmed it, as someone online said, on the set of The Office. In Zack Snyder's Justice League, it's darkly lit. It's supposed to convey the mood. They're using chiaroscuro. Like, it actually looks like a piece of art. All of that is to say, that the movie is actually really good. And then it ends with this epilogue, this sort of tantalizing epilogue, where they flash forward into the future, Batman's having a dream. And in the future, Lois is dead. Superman has gone bad. It appears that some members of the Justice League are just not there at all. And so he sets up this whole other universe that they're ready to go to, right? What is supposed to happen next? What, what comes next? Frankly, it makes everybody want the Zack Snyder universe. So I know Warner Brothers has decided to move in a different direction. Warner Brothers is saying that what they actually want is a Blue Beetle movie. What Warner Brothers is saying is that they desperately need the Ta-Nehisi Coates Superman, which makes perfect sense. The guy who thinks that America is systemically racist should definitely be writing the all-American hero who stands for truth, justice, in the American way. Makes absolute perfect sense if you're a crazy person. So Warner Brothers has decided to move away from this, even though by all measures, I mean, from Rotten Tomatoes to the number of people who viewed this on HBO Max, this is actually rather a major hit. I mean, honestly, like big congratulations to Zack Snyder because he's been beat up by the critics a lot. And I think very unfairly in certain cases. Again, I'm a defender of Batman versus Superman, particularly the extended version, which is quite good. It is a return in some ways to something that used to be really good about Hollywood, which was directors having control of their own properties, directors really being able to make their imprint on a film. Joss Whedon is like the TV director who they bring in from the wings to kind of slapdash something together and then throw it out there. Um, but Snyder is a director and you may not like what he's doing, but he's doing something unique. And that I really appreciate. If you haven't watched it, it's definitely worth the watch. It's a lot of fun. And uh, congratulations to Zack Snyder and to the people who decided to fund this sort of quixotic enterprise, which ends up being kind of a hit.